Like I could never have two miss two two babies with a mistress with my wife. I can't even have a mistress, and we still be married, right? Because she looked at the ground rules from day one. So, Tanita and Jermaine and Tanita Johnson went through adultery, not just once but twice, and they spoke about this in their. Um, book called Marriage Uncut. And so I went away for a weekend to Chicago, which is where I'm from. Um, we were kind of at each other's throats for probably two or three weeks. We hadn't been speaking. Weeks? Yeah, weeks. Weeks. We had Years. We had been, 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 well, <laughs> yeah, but what led up to the actual act. So yeah, the, it had been years and stuff had been festering on, off and on. Yeah. We had said we wanted a divorce for, you know, you go through six months of good, six months of bad. In the six months of bad, you like, let's just get divorced. But it came time for me to go away um, for a weekend and I went home to Chicago and hooked up with somebody for a one night stand. So I came back and I was gonna try and hold it. I thought I was gonna try and hold it and not tell him. And um, yeah, that didn't work so well. So, <laughs> so uh, there is nothing that can calm him down. So Jermaine, 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 <laughs> tell us what your immediate response, your feelings, your emotions, what? Um, I well, you hit the fan. Yeah, I did. I, I yeah, I hit the roof. I did. I went off. In Grady Grace Temple. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where I was at. To me, hey, let's be clear. That hey. Who cares at this moment? Hey, I could have been at the gate of heaven right then. It was anger is anger. I'm sorry. It's just it is what it is. But no, I, I betrayal. I mean, you Satan is going to bring you in remembrance of that and he's yeah. gonna say well remember and even when you're having in, when, when you finally when you guys finally get back to being intimate satan is going to use those thoughts and the things that she said and it's going to mess with you and you're not going you listen our brains cannot handle certain things one thing you just said okay that was, this was eight years ago not now it's seven mm -hmm. eight, eight years ago yeah. and I made the mistake of give, make it, making her, and I say making her as I just kept pressuring her to give me the gory details. To this day, it still bothers me. To this day, to, to where I, I already know when those thoughts come, I have a thing that I have to go through, whether it's worship music, whether what it is. I have a whole process that I have to go through to get rid of it. Mm. But I, so that's why, so I understand exactly what you're saying. Like if, if God is putting, if, if, if there's not a uh, like a, a health reason why you need to know, like you say, it's, it's not worth it. It's better because when when she started to ask me about the gory details, because I was going through it, I wouldn't give her. I would, wouldn't give me the details. I would prefer her leave. <laughs> me. Honestly, but to be honest, I would prefer she leave me so that she wouldn't have to deal with it. Yeah. Because of what I know I deal with because I made her go through it. I'm bleeding. I mean, I'm just bleeding inside, but I had to put on a mask every day. And it got so bad that I drove to Brightmoor Church. And I went, I want to talk to Pastor Jamie. I, I got to talk to him and he wasn't available. So I got one of the pastors and he grabbed me in a room and I went and just trying to just tell him about her, 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 what she did wrong, what she did wrong. And he looked at me and he was like, you just got to forgive. I forgave and he said, no, you didn't. And that right there, I had that light bulb moment where I said, you know what? I had to start to look at myself. And what I figured out was that we have to take care of mental, physical, spirit. We have mental, spiritual, physical, emotional beings. And what I've learned that we more physical men, we provide, I saw my father getting up every day, working three jobs to provide for my family. So that's what, most things not taught, they're caught. So I thought that being a man, being a grand poobah, being a man of God is providing for my family, mentally, physically, but emotionally, I never knew, I wasn't equipped to do that, didn't know it. And one thing you know, money kind of camouflages things. So you know one thing too, a lot of times men don't want to ask their wives to teach them, right, certain things, because we have this worldly view that our wives suck our brains out and brainwash us to be like robots, right? So we got to kill that mentality and get out of that mentality. I mean, it's true. Most people are absolutely right. I went into my first marriage with a lot of pain, hurt, uh, despair. I mean, I just felt such a sense of rejection. 
And so as I was dating men, I always allowed men into my space who seemed to gravitate to me. If they thought that I was pretty, if they thought that I was shapely, if they thought that I was funny, you know, whatever they thought about me, that made me feel wanted by them. He thought all of it, look. <laughs> <laughs> 